Thank you. Thank you, uh, Su Yi. It's a pleasure to be with you guys today. Uh, I think this is a great topic to talk about with small businesses, and uh, we're very excited. And so today we're going to focus on uh, challenges that small businesses face in dealing with growth. And today we also have with us, who's not here in person, uh, but will be participating via pre-recorded video, uh, a individual who will share some of their experience and wisdom as well. Uh, but to speak about myself pre uh, just for a moment, um, I am Matthew Alex. I am the president and owner of the Alex Group, Inc. Uh, we are a small business uh, consulting firm focused around supporting and helping small businesses uh, develop and grow. We've been in business since 2001, uh, and we've had a number of different clients working within the private sector, as well as in state, local uh, arenas, and also within the federal government. Uh, and the topics that we've covered with our clients have been everything from uh, just starting up a business, how do you develop a, a startup plan, a business plan to a business that's ongoing and executing and how do we grow and sustain growth, uh, as well as how to identify resources that I need in addition to that also funding. And so today this topic is one that all businesses face in managing growth. And how do I manage that? How do I know when it, what do I need when my company begins to grow and I want to scale in size? And a lot of that has to do with understanding the business plan that you are in. And so today, uh, without further ado, I would like to just kind of jump right in here and bring on our uh, guest who is also going to do a presentation, as I stated earlier, from a distance. And he's not here today. This is a pre-recorded presentation. And uh, that is Jose Espinoza, who is the Supply Diversity Program Manager for Carol Water Service. So without further ado, let's start the first part of this discussion with Jose giving a discussion on challenges uh, that small business face. Good morning, good morning, everybody, and, and welcome for joining. Um, um, I am hoping that um, you get a lot from this event. Um, and from my perspective, I'm hoping that we can make a difference in the development of small businesses. Uh, my name is Jose Espinosa. I am the Supplier Diversity Program Manager for California Water Service. We are a water utility operating, operating in more than 20 cities across the state. Uh, my role in Supplier Diversity is to help our organization achieve the goal, which is 21.5% of procurement with minority-owned, woman-owned, disabled veteran and LGBT-owned businesses. So um, what I would say as a quote-unquote buyer for the buyer side, uh, it is important that uh, as a small business, you can navigate the procurement process, uh, the utilities procurement process. And by this, I mean having an understanding of, for example, the insurance requirements and what type of insurance applies to the work that you do, general liability, auto, professional, Nowadays, cybersecurity as well. Have an understanding of the terms and conditions that will govern the purchase, the transaction. Uh, is it a contract? Is it a standard uh, terms and conditions? Um, also understand whether what you're selling, uh, do we buy it in a centralized way, in a decentralized way? Uh, for example, is it a statewide contract or is it a city-specific contract? Also understanding the contract terms. They can be three years and they can be uh, renewed a couple of times. So having an understanding of that procurement process will give you a better idea of when an opportunity can come up. Uh, one more important thing is understanding whether as, as a utility, uh, we purchase while you're selling, uh, but these the products or the services, but also do we purchase that directly or is it through subcontracting where you have to partner uh, with our primes? So um, that goes as long as uh, about us. But um, one of the questions is was, uh, what are some of the associated challenges that I have seen? Um, it is always great when a, uh, 
diverse the small business increases their footprint with us. Um, maybe they start with a small contract and then now they have a second contract or maybe they're pro providing services in a second city. Some other things that I have seen are cash flow. Uh, as an organization, when you take an additional contract, you need to understand what are the payment terms of this contract and what does that mean for your capital? Uh, we know that access to capital is a topic that has been very important in the last few years and it remains uh, very critical. Uh, are you able to maintain the quality of the service? Uh, and that's one of the challenges that I have seen where at the very beginning, uh, we might get great service, but then as you start expanding your operations, maybe you're not as available on the phone maybe it takes a little bit longer to reply to the email, so to get that quote. So that's very important. How do you maintain the quality of the service? Uh, also, when you're dealing with several uh, contracts, for example, uh, you need to keep track of those contract terms. Um, they might be uh, up for renewal or are up for RFPs in different dates. So you need to make sure that you keep track of those dates so that you can plan ahead. Um, and also taking on capacity. Um, are you able to take on a third city now? Or are you able to take on a third location or to take on a bigger order? So those are some of the, the challenges that I have seen um, that I recognize that goes along with the growth of, um, of the small business diverse suppliers for us. Thanks. So now we, uh, we hear what Jose was talking about in terms of challenges that small business face. I wanna take a moment to break it down just a little bit further. And so as a small business, you have an idea, you have a product or service that you offer and that you now want to provide that service or product uh, to, to others. And whether it be individuals or whether it be to agencies. But the first thing you have to do is understand where you want to be within the next one to two to three to four to five years. So you need to develop a plan. And in developing that plan, you're going to address certain topics. In order to grow, you must have a good organizational structure. And understanding your organizational structure from top to bottom helps you understand what you need in order to provide the service that you want to provide or produce and sell the product that you want to uh, sell. And so understanding the organizational structure is key. But the next part of that, and as we go through this presentation, everything tends to come back to dollars and cents. And so I might have an, an ideal world, an organizational structure that gives me a CEO that gives me a CFO, chief financial officer, that gives me an operating officer, that give, provides a HR department, that provides uh, a, an accounting and finance department, that provides, um, if you are working in a logistics train, a division that deals with logistics and on and on, but only you know what you, your needs are within your organization. But that's ideal. But right now, the question is, what can I afford and what can I sustain? And so that's the same when looking at that organizational structure. And that's based on the amount of revenue or the amount of work activity that your organization is producing at this day and time. And so therefore, as we all know, in small businesses, you wear multiple hats. So then that's where you look for key people that you can bring into the organization that are multi-talented in different areas and that are capable of wearing multiple hats so that now you can do more with what you have. And that way you can control your growth. Growth is one of those things that you want to manage. You just don't want to let it get out of control because it can overwhelm you very quickly. And you can be in a situation where you may have had a successful launch, but then now you're struggling because you can't keep up with orders because you don't have enough equipment or you don't have enough personnel to produce that and you can't service your client. And that is not where you wanna be. 
We want to be in a position as a business to where we can meet all of the requests that come through our door in a timely, effective manner with quality and top of the line service. And so therefore organizational structure is key. So keep that in mind. The next one is you need to have systems and processes in place that will help the organization function. What do I mean by that? Creating an organization is just putting boxes in a place with attaching responsibilities to those boxes. Now, when it comes to execution, how do we execute? How do we do what we do? Whatever that is within your business, then you need to take some time to outline that, lay it out, because some of the challenges that small businesses face in growth is they do not have a very clear and concise process to execute whatever service that they're providing internally and externally. And so taking the time to lay out a process, taking the time to understand the systems that you may need to support that process. And then once again, what can I afford today? And what can I afford in a year from now as I grow? You plan to grow. You see the shiny uh, tricklet that's sitting out there and you want to go grab it. You want to go grab the next one. You want to go grab the next one. But can you afford to do that? Uh, Jose talked about cash flow. Cash flow in this business and any business is king because at the end of the day, you have to pay bills. You have to pay payroll. You have to buy products. Uh, you continue to have to cover all of your expenses. And some of those other expenses are key expenses such as insurances, licenses, rent, utilities, all of those things matter. So how much money is it costing me each month in order to operate and stay in business? Based on knowing that dollar amount, then you can focus on what amount of revenue that you need to generate in order to cover those basic cash flow needs. And then once you determine that, then you can start looking at how I scale, how I grow because growth comes to, I need more revenue in order to grow. And then, but it's a catch 22. Uh, I wanna grow, but I need more revenue, but how do I get more revenue? Then that's where we get, when we go further in the presentation, we can then talk about what other financial resources are out there to help you. So once again, understanding your organizational structure, establish good systems and processes, understand the cost of what it takes to operate your business and, and then planning ahead. That's a business plan as well as a business development and marketing plan, which basically says where, who, what, when, where, and how am I going to grow this business and the method in which I'm going to do it in. So with that, now I would like to go back to our other key presenter, Jose Espinoza, as he goes further now and talk about opportunities. So let's bring on Jose. So we talk about identifying some of these challenges. Um, what do you do about it, right? Uh, what are some of your resources? Uh, first of all, talk to your client. Um, and by this, I mean, if you're contracting with us, it will be us. Uh, there are internal resources available that you might not be aware of. Uh, for example, payment terms by, might be negotiated. This might be something that you can get better payment terms uh, based on the contract and the relationship that you have with your client. Um, also, the contract uh, could be bundled or unbundled. And by this, I mean consolidated or not to make it easier for you. So rather than bidding on three cities directly, you could bid on one, for example, or rather than, uh, for example, having all the material together with the delivery, maybe you can split the material and the delivery when it comes to the bidding. Um, also extensions or amendments to the contracts that can help you. Uh, we do recognize that at times pricing does change, uh, especially nowadays with everything going around the supply chain. So it is important that you talk to your client and help them understand. Um, after all, your viability is our success. Uh, the last thing that we want is one of our uh, suppliers 
to go under because we were not aware of certain things. And now we have a gap that we need to fill in our operation. First, talk to your client. Second, talk to advocacy organizations uh, like the California Capital. Um, these organizations have access to programs that are sponsored either by the state, by the federal government, or even some of the utilities as well. So they have a wealth of information that they can help you um, access programs or assess capacity um, for you to, to continue growing. Third, I would say in industry organizations. Uh, for example, we have the American Water Works Association. It is whom uh, we're connected to. Uh, these organizations are aware of the challenges that small businesses uh, can face, and they can bring to, uh, to the fall uh, resources for you. It could be training, it could be access to capital. So I would say those are the three main resources, your client, advocacy organization, and industry organization. Now, you as a business owner, how do you recognize um, that you're facing this growing uh, growth challenges. What I would say the tipping point will be when you are focused more on the operation than rather on the vision of the business. Uh, you as a business owner, you are the one that needs to drive it forward and you're the one that needs to come up with the vision so that uh, your personnel, your employees, um, your partners can help you execute and take on that. And along those lines, my tip for scaling will be to train your employees. Train your employees and provide them agency. Empower them to make the decisions. Empower them to represent. I know that uh, we want to be in control. I know we want to know. Um, but it is important that you allow your employees that opportunity for success, that opportunity to show what they can do. And I think that if you enable them, if you empower them, uh, that will be a key for you to uh, continue growing in a way that it's sustainable. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Jose covered a couple of items focusing towards contracts, focused on vision, training, empowerment, understanding other organizations where you can seek support. So let's talk about a few of those. First, let's talk about leveraging your resources and leveraging your relationships. I always say it's key in that any business that is beginning and starting up and is operating should know organizations around their environment that support or do some of the similar things in which they do. There are a number of professional organizations, and I'm not going to try to narrow this down to a specific industry, but for example, um, the Society of American Military Engineers is an organization that supports uh, efforts towards construction and indus engineering industry. So it would be key to join an organization like that for several reasons, for latest up-to-date information about the trends in the industry for uh, updated information on potential opportunities, because more than likely, a lot of the agencies that you would want to buy your services from are part of that organization, as well as looking for teaming partners, as well as looking for resources, employees to work with, and just to be able to network and build a collaborative group that you can use as a sounding board uh, in terms of challenges that you may face that they have already faced and they could share that with you. And that is key. So developing relationships is key as part of growing the business. Do not ever believe that you have to do this alone. You don't have to do it alone. There's a lot of resources out there that can help you move forward. You just got to remember to look at that when you're keeping your head above water and keep that as one of your key elements. Who else can I rely on and lean on to listen, learn, and collaborate with and based on challenges I'm facing to grow and sustain my business? The next one I would say 
is support resources. Those support resources basically or resources such as um, insurance, okay, advisor, tax advisor, uh, legal support uh, in terms of what you're doing when you're writing contracts or purchasing equipment or getting into other agreements and engagements, getting legal support. And those are resources that are part-time resources that you need to develop to support your business on the side. Uh, your banking institution, uh, you know, financial, from that perspective, having someone that you can call upon to talk about where you are with lines of credit uh, and capability of securing loans and information that you need. Then, you know, having that support network, which is your specialized support team off to the side that helps you support your business as it's growing and it's moving forward. What insurances do you need at this part of the game to cover and protect yourself from liability issues uh, for you, your employees, and your products and services that you're providing? And so that becomes key. And so that's another uh, area that you need to home in on. Other organizations are community-based organizations or nonprofit organizations that are out there providing services at no cost to help you uh, address concerns that you have within your business. One of them, such organization is California Capital. Today, California Capital is hosting this event as a training event to provide information to small businesses. That organization provides a wealth of support and resources uh, that can help you with your small business. And so therefore, an organization like California Capital is an organization that you need to tie into. So because it's resources out there and the most important part about it is that it doesn't cost you anything. Just your desire and attendance and your willingness to want to seek out and learn more to help your company grow. Then I want to move on to talk about vision. Uh, Jose talked about vision as an owner. And as an owner, you have a vision of what you see your company being, becoming what it is now and where you want it to become. And so that vision has to be communicated throughout the organization. And so that others can understand your vision so that you can develop ways in which the organization can operate to implement that vision. And in doing so, that is also what Jose pointed out about empowering your employees. But first you gotta find them and you gotta find good ones. And sometimes in, in the business world, it's hard to come across very good solid talent. And so therefore, that those organizations that I talked about earlier that you can become a part of, you can be able to collaborate with them to find good, solid talent that's out there that you can bring into your organization that will understand what you do, buy into your vision, and help you grow your company. They become key because you have to trust them. Micromanaging a company when it's small and very small when you're starting up you got your hands in all of the pots and you're overseeing everything. But as the company begins to grow, one of the challenges that small businesses face in growing their company is being able to take their hands off, let go, let it breathe, and let it grow. It's just like when you, you have a child and they're a baby and every time they fall, you run to them to pick them up. And every time they go to do something, you're there to help them. But at some point, you have to take your hands off and let them learn their motor skills. Let them learn critical thinking, the problem solving. Let them fall down a few times and so that they know what they have to do to not do that in the future, the next time around. Same thing with the business. If you, if you micromanage it too much, you'll smother it. It won't breathe, it won't grow. And so one of the challenges is as owners is to have trust and faith in the processes, the systems, and the people that you put in place in order for the business to grow. Take your hands off. That doesn't mean you lose control. You control it through the systems and processes that you put in place, through the vision that you put out there and the overall command and control that you have on the daily basis. But you allow them and empower them to do what they need to do within that framework to help be successful. The other thing I want to talk about uh, with that building is other suggestions. Contracts, engagements, orders, or sales. 
it is critical that you seek assistance in reviewing any type of contract, any type of agreement, any type of order for sales that you enter into such that you can make sure that what you're signing is in the best interest of your firm and provides the best possible service that you can provide to your clients. Seek assistance and get advice for someone to review those documents in the legal sense before you sign. The laws continually change here in the state of California and you do not wanna get caught later with an uh-oh in the middle of an engagement because that can be drastic. Other suggestions that I have concerning growing at this time with your business, Jose said that he can untell when a business is growing and struggling by how much time you, the owner, is putting into that business. I would say that in addition to that, when you understand where you are in the growth process is when you start feeling those pains. What I mean by that, I can't feel any more orders because I can't get to them. Why can I get to them? I can't take on any more uh, sales because I don't have product. Why do I not have product? I can't produce anything because I don't have the equipment to produce. Uh, I can't get out there and service that client because I don't have enough resources. Right then and there, you are now identifying areas that are preventing uh, you from growing uh, your business. But remember what I said at the beginning, we want to manage the growth, not allow the growth to manage us. So that means that you determine how and when you want to grow and be clear and concise and strategic in doing so. Just don't take on things to take on things and then get to a realization that I can't service my client. I can't provide the products that they're asking for. I can't provide the resources that they are looking for me to put on, uh, uh, on site to execute that project or I don't have the capacity in my building warehouse in order to bring in more material so that I can sell. So make sure you understand all those facets. So you're constantly planning, you're constantly evaluating your business and your business process, and you're constantly looking at your cash flow, and all of those factors come together in making the decision on how you grow. But you can do it because there are businesses all around the world that are growing and growing at a healthy pace each and every day and sustaining themselves. Sustainment is a key part of the growing process. What do I mean by sustainment? It's one thing to get the, the, the golden charm, but it's another thing to be able to keep it. What do we mean by keeping it? Being able to provide a service consistently at a level of high quality continuously. That's sustaining, meaning through one year to the next year to the next year at the level of growth in which you are. And those processes, those systems, that organizational structure, that understanding of cash flow will help you get there. And so now let's move on to uh, back to Jose so that he can share with us uh, one more item in an area and concerning opportunities. So let's go back to Jose. As my parting words, I will tell you that it can be done. I have seen the growth uh, and nothing is more fulfilling in this role than seeing that. Um, as a story, uh, there was a, there is a woman owned business in Southern California that provides janitorial services for us. Um, after meeting her in an outreach event like this, uh, we she came to compete for uh, our SLA uh, contract. Uh, she submitted competitive pricing. Also, uh, her quality of service has been great. So she she had that contract. And then all of a sudden, a second opportunity came with our Rancho Dominguez Torrance office. Uh, and again, just learning or uh, that district learning about her quality of service, uh, they were excited to bring her in into the bidding as well. 
So she won the second office. So now, after having continuous conversations with her, I remain, uh, I remind her how important it is for her to maintain her quality of service, because that was one of the major reasons why the second city wanted to bring her over, because they knew that she was reliable um, and that the service uh, was top notch. So those are some of the stories that we see. So just sharing that to let you to, to remain positive and to let you know that it is possible um, that other your fellow other small businesses uh, have, can have the successes. Um, one more, a couple of points. Uh, one, uh, since we are small businesses, and I'm a utility. I'm always seeking for contractors for us. Uh, we have opportunities in fencing. We have opportunities in water pumps. Uh, we have in janitorial services, uh, commercial electricians, industrial electrician work. So. Um, Finally, um, my contact information, I have the California Capital team will send it to you. So if you have any ideas, um, if you want to forward me your capability statement, a brochure, your website, or anything that I can take a look at, I'll be more than happy to receive it. And once again, thank you for joining the event, and thank you for the California Capital. They always do great work. I'm always proud to partner with them. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Jose for uh, sharing with us today in the areas of challenges, challenges that small business face, suggestions, and potential opportunities. Now, as I uh, recap, I want to focus on the last area that he was talking about. Growth, seeing the growth. He shared a one or two success stories I want to talk about in this section now about finances, and then I also want to talk about quality within the business. First, let me say, sometimes in growing the business to be successful, we have to pause and take a step back. What do we mean? Sometimes you need to look at and evaluate where you are, and in order to move forward the correct way, the way that's going to help you become successful, you need to stop doing some of the things that you're doing now. Even if that means if we're bidding on projects right now, maybe I need to stop bidding on projects in order to re-engineer, retool, uh, readjust and modify my process and the way that I go about doing my business. The key is to develop a quality product. And so how do I do that? The second part of that is how do I get that quality product out to market? What avenues do I have that are available to me in order for me to do that? Do I understand those avenues clearly? Am I, am I in the right lanes right now? Or should I adjust to move into different lanes in order to easily get my product out there to the market? Whether that product is an actual material, uh, that is being sold or particular services that we are providing. How does the buying community know and understand what it is that I'm offering and how do I deliver it to them in a timely manner? And whenever I deliver it, it has to be quality. Quality is also what sustains the growth. You enter into a contract with an agency or an entity and you're able to meet the obligations and requirements of that contract and you even exceed those, guess what? They are going to want to do business with you again. And the key is how do I establish repeat business? You want to be in the, in the business about establishing repeat businesses. Those relationships that I talked about, now let's talk about relationships with buying community and services. You do not want a one-time, one-shop done type of relationship. You want to create those relationships with those buying communities in which they come back to you again and again and again and again. And that's how it is done with products, whether your product is shoes, dresses, jewelry, um, perfume, or any of those things. Uh, whatever they are, is the idea is to get the customer to come back and purchase again. Same thing if I'm providing professional services or any other type of services. 
the idea is to get that buying community or that buying agency to want to come back to me again and again and again. And guess what? When they come back and buy again and again and again, what's happened is that your revenue grows. And if your revenue grows, then you can grow your business in a managed way. That means you can buy additional equipment that you need. Now, that means you can enlarge where you are from one location to another to expand. That means that you can go hire uh, more qualified individuals to be part of your team. That means now you have an established contract, you have an established track record. Now you can put that information together in a, in a proper manner and then go present it to a financial institution or someone who is lending money to help you develop uh, the back, I won't say backlog, but the reserve of financial capital that you would need to continue to sustain and grow your business. Those elements are key. So quality of service is key. Delivery is important. And then seeing the growth. Uh, I had a client one time uh, that was doing a lot of work and they were bidding on different jobs, and but they couldn't get past a certain dollar amount. And they, they, they didn't understand why and how. So we took some time to sit down with them, look at their operation, uh, look at the things that they were doing and who they were selling to. And then we gave them some recommendations. And then we put together a plan that basically said for the next six months, now I'm not advocating that it is, this is the case for all businesses, but for the next, in this case, for the next six months, let's not go after anything else. Let's look at what we have and let's be able to manage and produce what we have right now in a quality fashion. Let's establish the quality. Now let's look at the processes. Now let's look at what we do and let's come up with a way to tell the best possible story of how we deliver our services and showcase the quality of our services. Now let's go find who those clients are that would be interested in this type of approach to providing services. And then once we do that, then now we can go back into this and then start going after those products again. And in doing so, the company became very successful. Uh, they started off with just being able to get projects that were six, seven hundred thousand, eight hundred, maybe close to a million, to where we started within a year period. Uh, nailing projects that were in the one to three million dollar range and then quickly scale from that over a period of time up to 26 million and then they were averaging 30 to 40 million dollars a year when they were only doing one to two million dollars but it had it, it had to take the owner and the team the understanding that they need to stop back up and refocus as to how they were approaching the business and develop a very good clear plan that would launch them forward in the right lane. And that's key, understanding your business, understanding the market, and then putting the things in place that you need to be successful. So, and the last part of that, of course, now is finances. Everything goes back to dollars and cents. And so you have to have uh, the finances in order to continue to grow and scale your business. And so at this point, with that, um, I would like to, uh, introduce Sunita um, Mahara. I, I think I might have said your last name a little wrong there, but uh, but I want to bring on Sunita, and she's the senior loan officer for California Capital, and she can uh, address and share with you uh, the things that you need to know within this financial uh, area and what it would take in order for you to obtain the proper capital that you need to sustain and grow your business. Sunita. Thank you, Mr. Alex. I really appreciate it. Such great information. Today, the information that you heard from Mr. Alex is invaluable. Um, I want everyone to know that. I sat through here and listened through the whole presentation because I think it's great information, not only for you, but also for lenders to see what is out there, what people are being taught and the information that is relevant today. One of the things about financing and getting additional financing is cash flow. Something that Jose also talked about is cash flow. 
we need to see net profits um, in the previous two to three years. Now, say one of those years you had negative income, just explain it to the lender, explain it to us why that negative income came about. Maybe there's some one-time expenses, uh, it was due to COVID, but previously you were earning money, you had a net profit, you were able, the, the business was stable. Um, what is a little bit more difficult to get lending for is if your business did not make money and you are trying to expand. Uh, was working with a company just recently and great opportunity to expand. But as Mr. Alex said, do we need to step back and reevaluate? The business hadn't made money in the last two years or since they started two and a half years ago. But they have the potential to grow exponentially. Um, is that the right thing to do at this point in time? Because their expenses will also go up exponentially. They would have to make 130% more than they have. Um, that's their break even would be for the additional expenses. And that's something Mr. Alex also went over. Breaking even, what do you need, what, what do you need on a monthly basis to keep the doors open? So you should know that too. So projecting how much income that you're going to need, looking the, at that information and evaluating it on a monthly basis. You know, some of the ways to get money uh, when you're starting a business or expanding a business is your own savings. So you are going to self-fund. You can borrow from family and friends. You can get equity partners. You can get partners into the business. You would have to give up a percentage of the business to be able to get this money. Um, there's also business loans from banking institutions, um, local banks, uh, larger banks, whoever you're banking with, I would get with them and talk to them and ask them, how is it that you'd be able to get a loan? And what is the loan for? I would not start a month away from when you need that money. Um, Pre-planning, as that was already stated, uh, a year in advance, six months in advance. Uh, business loans are not quick loans. And I don't want you to be put in a position where you needed the money yesterday to get something done tomorrow, because unfortunately that is just not gonna happen. You won't get money that fast. You can get money that fast from online lenders, but that money, the cost of that money may end up putting you out of business because they will collect that money from your accounts every single day. They will take payment every single day. So that's really hard to get out of. It's fast money, easy money, but as everybody knows, when something is that easy, there's probably a catch to it. And the catch is they're charging you a lot of money for $20,000 or $10,000 or $100,000. So there's um, traditional lenders and there's non-traditional lenders. Uh, California Capital, we are a nonprofit. We do have direct lending programs and I will go over some of that with you right now. We have a direct lending program, micro loans between $500 and $50,000, and then small loans between $50,000 and $100,000. Um, but they're in specific counties. They're not in all counties. So it's Yolo, Sacramento, El Dorado, Placer, Nevada, Stanislaw, Calaveras, Solano, Yuba, Sutter and San Joaquin counties. So we can go from 500 to $100,000. Now we have another loan program. It's our small loan program and we can go up to $150,000, but that's also county specific. So that would be Sacramento, El Dorado, Placer and Nevada counties. Uh, if you want more information from that, I will go ahead and put it in the chat. You can go to californiacapital.org and uh, find information in regards to those loans there as well. But that's just some information that I wanted to give to you today is to make sure you know your cash flow as was stated already, uh, to not have a net profit um, and wanting to expand, that's gonna be difficult for you to be able to get a loan with a banker or a non-traditional lender. Also, one of the things that I wanna go back to banking, uh, you should really have a banking institution that works with you, right? Meaning working with you that you pick up the phone and you can talk to somebody. Um, I know there's been a lot of movement with a lot of bankers locally moving around to different bank uh, banking institutions, but you could also follow them or you could speak to somebody else there. The larger banks, it might be a little bit more difficult, but your local banks, they know 
they know the businesses in the area, they live in the area, um, you may have uh, better luck with them. So I would just shop around. So shopping around for a banker is also a thing that I think that you should do because those are that's somebody that you can have a, um, a great experience with and that knows local business. So that's just something I wanted to um, throw out. And then constantly reevaluating your business. So on a monthly basis, make an appointment with yourself. Um, I, you know, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, uh, put it on your calendar. So that way you can reevaluate what's going on, what's going great, what's not going so great. I know that sometimes when companies expand, it's more difficult to get a hold on things, but this is definitely something that you should look into as well, is making sure that you're constantly evaluating your company. If anybody has any questions, please let me know. I can answer them in chat. And uh, I'll just open it up right now for questions for myself or Mr. Alex. Thank you, Sunita. Um, at this point, we 